Hey, this is Bill Bolton from TheSpeakingHusky.com and The Speaking Husky DIY Postgraduate Institute of the Communication Arts. I appreciate you joining me today for part three of our series, Overcoming the Fear of Public Speaking and Performing. Brief review of part one and part two before we get into part three. In part one, we discussed how much of our fear of public speaking is caused by misperception. Sometimes I look out at an audience and instead of seeing fellow human beings who want some useful information that will improve the quality of their lives, I see 37 ton grizzly bears like something you would see in a horror movie and I'm the main course and they are going to just rip me to shreds. Of course that's not what, what's out there. What's out there are people who want some useful information. As speakers, we're in the safest place in the room. For more information about that, please watch the first video. In the second video, part of this series, we talked about how a lot of us think our speeches have to be perfect, and that is not true. I guarantee you, think of your favorite speaker, go to YouTube and watch that person speak, and if you have seen one, excuse me, not seen, but if you have taken one high school public speaking course, or just study public speaking a little on your own, even watch some of these Speaking Husky series videos, you will know enough about speaking to spot some slight flaw in whoever it is that you're watching. My point in sharing that is that our speeches don't have to be perfect. The perfect speech has never been given, and when we focus on making a perfect speech, it generates anxiety and it keeps us from giving the useful information that we need to give to our audiences. What helps us is focusing on our audience and focus, focusing on improving the quality of the lives of, our members, of the members of our audience. Right now I'm doing that to the best of my ability. I've caught myself stumbling a little bit as I go along. Doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to keep going. And you can do the same thing when you're shooting a video or when you're giving a speech. Of course, for more information, watch part two of the series. I've got three more points today. Point number one that will help you overcome your fear of public speaking and anxiety. For us to overcome our fears of making speeches, we must be completely committed to overcoming our fear. Point two. All of us need to learn to monitor every waking thought we have and replace any negative thoughts we have with positive thoughts. And I know some of you out there, and I can relate to you because on some days I'm like this and I used to be like you 24-7. Some of you are thinking, oh my gosh, this dude's going to reel off into some motivational speaker, power positive thinking, mumbo jumbo. I'll bet he's even going to start playing the secret video and splice it right in the middle of what it... No, I'm not going to do any of that, though I've drawn some useful information from motivational speakers and from the secret video. I'm not going there. What I'm going to do is share what my experience has been with using positive thinking to overcome any fear I've had of, of speaking and to improve the quality of my own life as a whole. Point three is it helps to breathe. It really does. I don't know if that sounded funny or not, and it wasn't really intended to be humorous. I hope I got a laugh or two out of it. That's going to make sense when we get there, there though. I'm drawing information from two excellent books today. First book is In the Spotlight, Overcome Your Fear of Public Speaking and Performing. That's by Janet Esposino. Janet is a therapist. My second book that I'm gathered much useful information from is Richard Mack Makowitz's book, Unleash the Warrior Within. Richard, actually I believe he likes to be called Mack. Mack is a retired Navy SEAL and as many of you know, U.S. Navy SEALs are people who are in situations far more dangerous than we will ever be in as public speakers. He has some great thoughts that will help us overcome our fear of public speaking and performing. Point one today. If we want to overcome our fear of public speaking, we have got to be completely 
dedicated to overcoming that fear. Janet Esposito believes that we should take a vow that we will overcome our fear of public speaking and anxiety. What works for me is to say, I'm going to overcome my fear of public speaking and anxiety, and then immediately make that into a goal. My goal is to overcome my fear of public speaking and anxiety, and then to break that goal down into several steps that I'm going to take. One might be, for those of you who aren't a member of to Toastmasters yet, I'm going to join Toastmasters. Break that goal statement down into subparts. Matt McElwitz says what works for him is breaking a goal down into its simplest form. When he is totally committed to a goal, he has a statement he uses when he, when the demon inside his head, which for me, it's not a demon, it's just like a huge, massive demon, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. But when that demon inside his head is telling him to quit, as it did many times when he was training to be a Navy SEAL, here's the phrase, still alive, can't quit. So for all of us, if we are committed to overcoming our fear of public speaking and performing, it may come down that to, it may come down to that for us, that as long as we're alive, we've got to keep working on it. Still alive, can't quit. When we have this desire to overcome public speaking, and our fear, excuse me, of public speaking and performing, when we've reached the point where we have an overwhelming desire and we've taken a vow to overcome public speaking and performing, and we've got our goals to achieve that vow written down, and our action steps. It's time to move on to the next step, and that's replacing every negative thought we have with a positive thought. It may be easier, come to think about it, if you do step number two before you get to step number one, the vow. Here's how this has worked for me. I find that when that demon, and for some of you it may not be a demon, you may think it's random brain chemicals, or you may call it a lower power, or you may name this nasty demon in your head the name of the teacher in junior high school you like the least. I don't know. Whatever it is, this is some of what that negative voice says to me. How dare you want to get paid to speak? The next time you give a speech, by the time you're through, you're not even going to have any friends left. Why would you ever want to post another public speaking video on YouTube? Writer? Speech writer? You want to write speeches for other people? You weren't even an English major. Now when I start hearing this nasty voice, something that helps is I can remind myself, I have not won the international speech competition in Toastmasters, but I have won that competition at a local level. I can remind myself of that. I can remind myself that people have paid me to write speeches for them, and more importantly, they like the speeches I've written for them. Those things help. Other positive statements and thoughts help. What works best for me, though, is statements of gratitude. And here's my favorite gratitude statement. I'm grateful I'm alive. I'm grateful I can walk. I'm grateful I can talk. I'm grateful I can see. I'm grateful I can breathe. I'm grateful I can hear. I'm grateful I have a roof over my head. I'm grateful I have food to eat. And I'm grateful that I have clean water to drink. Because I know there's at least a billion people in the world who do not even have access to clean drinking water. I find that when I stay in a state of gratitude, that there's no room for those hateful negative thoughts in my head. It makes it more likely that I'm going to deliver a powerful speech, that I'm going to make a very good video when it's time to make a video. It helps me in every area of my life, just not the speaking part. Part three, it helps to breathe. It really does. And I think I felt myself taking a breath as I made that transition there. What do I mean by that? Both Richard, excuse me, Mac, if you happen to be watching this video, Mac, I'm sorry I called you Richard. I certainly don't want Mac 
coming over to my house, former Navy SEAL, because I called him Richard and he can't stand it. I don't know if he can't stand it or not. Mac and Janet both suggest using breathing exercises to help calm our nerves and help us get that those negative emotions we're feeling to a point where we can turn them into positive energy that we can share with our audiences as we make our presentations. Here's a sentence that's helped me in my day-to-day -day living, not just in speaking, that Matt shares with each of his students. Here it is. I will always remember that breathing is the skill that helps keep my mind calm and my body strong during adversity. Janet and Matt both share several different ways that we can use our breathing to calm our nerves. I'm going to share just one, and I'm going to call it One Mississippi. Standing here right now, I don't remember what Matt calls in his book. It's a Matt Makowitz technique. The way this works is we breathe in for One Mississippi, and as we do, we feel any negative tension that we have in our body, any negative thoughts we're having. We feel all of those, all of those things going into our lungs. And then we breathe out. Another one, Mississippi. And as we breathe out, we feel all of that negative energy leaving our body and just going away like a cloud of water vapor into nothingness. I know that that te technique has helped me, and I'm confident that it will help each of you. Great time to use it is before we're standing up to make a presentation. Actually, I didn't forget what I was going to say next. And yes, that was a pregnant pause. And yes, it was a planned pregnant pause. I just did a one Mississippi technique. We can use Max technique, technique excuse me, when we're in the middle of a presentation also. I appreciate each of your time today. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for the feedback you've given me on the first two videos I've posted on YouTube. The first two videos that are part of the Speaking Husky series, Overcoming the Fear of Public Speaking Anxiety. Just one thing that's been shared with me that I'll let you know about. Some of you said in the first couple of videos, I was using the phrase, ladies and gentlemen, to the point that that was a filler word. In Toastmasters, we learned that we shouldn't you say and or and um. Some of us call phrases like ladies and gentlemen or I'm so excited or so or now advanced filler words. So thank you for letting me know that. I hope I did better on that today. And I hope if I said ladies and gentlemen, I didn't overuse the phrase. Please give me feedback about this video. Please let me know other topics you'd like for me to talk about. Please make any suggestions about my presentation. That is the only way I'll grow as a speaker is if I get that feedback from you. I'm an amateur at videos. I'm working to get better. Please keep that feedback coming. You can contact me through YouTube. You can contact me through the About page on thespeakinghusky.com. I also recently got into Pinterest. I love Pinterest. I don't know how many of you out there use that. I can't remember exactly what my Pinterest is. Just use your favorite search engine. Search for Bill Bolton. Bolton spelled B-O-U-L-T-O-N on Pinterest and I'm sure I'll pop right off. If not, contact me through one of the other methods and I'll tell you what my Pinterest page address is. Thanks again for joining me today. I can't state adequately in words how much it means to me that you watch this video. I certainly hope that this video has given you some techniques that will help you overcome any fear of public speaking and performing that you have. Thank you again for your time. Until next time, this is Bill Bolton from the public, excuse me, this is Bill Bolton from the speakinghusky.com and the Speaking Husky DIY Postgraduate Institute of the Communication Arts. Thanks for stopping by.